Well, we've got a nice damp day here, and it makes me think a lot about disease problems that we're having in a number of different crops. We've got wheat here and corn, but soybeans is the one that we're really going to be addressing just over the next couple of weeks in terms of spraying in our own fields. And it's something that a lot of farmers around the country are looking at now. Why? Well, you think about it, with soybeans right now being where they're at price-wise, wow, this crop has never been worth this much. So there well, is never, a certain never value is a big, out there is a big statement, to... though. I, I, it's, it's been worth this much before. The other thing right now with soybeans, in this part of the country, they're going into the reproductive stages, and that's where it's the most critical to control diseases. They can definitely hamper your yields. Now, when those flowers, for example, start to dry up on your soybean plants, it's a perfect spot for many infections, especially white mold, which can be a real big problem in our area and across the upper Midwest. Well, where white mold really gets started is in beans that are growing real tall early in the season. They have high fertility. You look at them and you say, those beans are going to be fantastic. They're my best beans. And then all of a sudden white mold hits. Well, white mold sure can be a problem. And we've seen it even on our own farm, completely lay the soybean crop down and 10 or even 20 bushels could be gone just like that. Yeah. So the important thing with this white mold is to address it early on. And you know, when we start talking about these diseases and controlling things like white mold. White mold has been an issue for many years, but we were really concerned that an even worse disease would show up in our fields, and that is soybean rust. We talked about that a lot four or five years ago. Everybody was worried that, you know, South America had it, now we in the U.S. were going to have it, but soybean rust never really materialized. What ended up happening, though, is a lot of farmers started spraying because, again, you got to spray early for diseases, and they realized, oh, you know, even though it doesn't look like I have a lot of disease problems, I'm gaining bushel and a half, two bushels, three bushels. On our farm, we've gained as high as 17 bushels per acre, and we still had 48 bushel beans where we didn't treat. It's just we had 65 bushel beans where we did treat. Well, that doesn't happen all the time, but it happens occasionally. It doesn't, but you know, it's just like in corn and wheat. If you've got a susceptible variety, you have pathogens present, we have the right weather, and you combine that with a not so tolerant variety, a susceptible <laughs> variety, you're gonna have problems. Like that year where we gained 17 bushels, there was a lot of powdery mildew in the area that year, and we had a variety planted that was susceptible to that, and all of a sudden everything came together and it was a big difference. Yep, yeah, but the whole thing is with these diseases, so we can talk white mold, we can talk soybean rust, we can get into brown spot and, and downy mildew, powdery mildew, all these things. The point is this, it does not take very much yield loss to pay for a fungicide treatment in today's market. Because if you go out there with a half rate of fungicide, which we typically will do in drier areas of the country, like where we farm, you go out with a half rate for five or six bucks an acre. That's it. So you're talking a half a bushel of soybeans. Well, we're always gaining more than a half a bushel of soybean spraying fungicide. The great thing is we can spray it ourselves. We do it at the same time we're spraying insecticide. And then if you say, well, I'm in an area where we have lots of disease pressure. Well, if you need to spray a full rate, spray a full rate, but chances are you're gonna gain a lot more than the bushel and a half or two bushels that we will gain on average. Okay, so what I'm trying to tell you here is it's a good return on investment even though you're not gaining a lot of yield most of the time. And if it is a couple of bushels better, wow, you know, you spent six bucks, or maybe if you're using a full rate, 12 bucks, and you get 20 or 30 bucks back, wow, that's a pretty good deal. Okay, let's get into the spray timings here. If you're after sclerotinia white mold, you need to spray early, and you might even need to spray a second time to do the best job. So we want you to spray at the R1 stage, first flower, spray early, spray ahead of when you have a disease problem. Because if you see the disease already set in, you can't recover that yield that you've already lost. Sure, you might be able to stop it from that point on, but you've already lost some yield. So you gotta spray early. So you go out there for sclerotinia white mold at R1, and probably again at R3. Okay, so two shots, I'd probably go full rate of something like Domark, possibly Topsin, Incognito. There are a few different products you can use there, but the products that are not very good on white mold would be things like Headline, Quilt, Stratego that you might typically use for the other diseases. Well, the other thing with white mold, Brian, is you just can't overlook. You got to do all the other things right. You can't say, well, I know I've got a history of problems in this field. I'm just going to drill my soybeans, pack them in tight. Uh, and, and not do anything different. No, you can't do it that way. You still have to use the cultural practices as well. Widen out the rows a little bit, maybe go back to 30 inch rows in those areas. Rotate crops, stay away from soybeans all the time. Try, right? try to pick varieties that have good tolerance, all that kind of thing. Because fungicides yep. are okay, but they aren't like a cure all that, oh boy, I'm gonna spray fungicide, all my problems go Well, away. part of the reason why is because they're only gonna last roughly a couple of weeks. You're gonna have a couple of weeks worth of residual out there. So if, it, if it's at the key times, you spray at the right timing, you're in pretty good shape. 
shape, but again, it's not the one single answer. Now, when we're talking about other diseases other than sclerotinia white mold, usually we're spraying in that R2 to R3 timing. So R2 would be full flower to R3's first pod. So usually on our farm, when we see the first pods start to show up in soybeans, that's when we're running out there. And we're not only spraying fungicide, we're spraying insecticide at that same time. And we're gonna talk more about soybean insecticides next week, but we like to get those two things done all in one shot. And the way I kind of look at it is if I can go out with a full rate of insecticide and a half rate of fungicide for less than $10 an acre, I got my diseases controlled and my bugs controlled. How is that not going to gain me at least a bushel? I mean, at least on our farm, it's always gained us at least what we put into it and usually four or five times over. The product you choose is definitely going to be important to control our weed of the week. We'll explain coming up later in the show.